Why do you think, uh, I mean, we've, we've talked about this so much, but why do you think most <laughs> brands are so bad at making their own commercials? You know, I think it's really simple. And it makes a lot of sense because we run some of our own brands as well. And it's interesting. We can fall, our, fall into some of the same traps. I think when you're working on your own ads, it starts navel-gazing really quickly. Yeah. Kind of in this cave. And when you first start the company, you're solving a problem for consumers. And then when you're in the company, you're starting to solve the company's problems. And you're looking so granularly at the things that you've been working on and the slight color change from light blue to light gray. And you stop thinking about it as a consumer because you're delivering it to them. And it's, I've had this conversation with a lot of CEOs before with, when they haven't liked an idea or they really love an idea that doesn't work for consumers. Like, well, of course, because you think like a CEO, unless CEOs are buying your product, <laughs> they're not going to think that way. Yeah. And we have to think, you know, I think the, the number one skill you have to develop as a marketer is like extreme empathy for consumers. Yeah. So I think that's one thing, but I also think they're so narrowly focused, like, well, we've already told this really simple story about what our product does. We have to say all the things we haven't talked about yet, but really your, your job is to stay on target with what is the big story that you're trying to tell over and over again. Yeah. And you can refine that story but it's always temp tempting to tell a story you haven't told yet instead of telling the same story, but tell it better, be more clear with it. So, yeah. Um, and then I think the other thing is you can kind of get in a creative rut in, inside a company. Yeah. Um, as much as I love our internal brands, doing work for other brands always keeps us sharp and yeah. we get to see trends that they're, uh, that they're touching and, uh, you know, in genetics, there's this concept of hybrid vigor, like purebred dogs, like the weakest dogs in the world. Yeah. The genetics are pure, but by mixing new ideas and old ideas, you come up with great stuff. And I think all create creativity doesn't come from nowhere. Yeah. You know? There starts to be that vacuum internally, I think. And we've talked about this a lot that you just start pitching the same ideas. And you also have the excuses for why you aren't allowed to go outside that. You know, you talk to an internal creative team, they're like, well, anytime we try and do something cool like what you guys do, you know, we get shut down or they don't believe us. Or, And I think a lot of that is why we think so much about the power of an external group helping the internal group to really find these hidden gems that they talk about, but they just don't think about. So. Well, and that brings up a really good point. I, th I think also internal groups' main motivation is not to get fired. Yeah. And we, our main motivation is to get hired again. And so they hmm, have that's to- That's a great point. They have to de-risk everything they're doing. Yeah. And they have to get it through committee. And ours, we have to get them to buy into our process, and then we're going to swing for the fences. Yeah. And we have to earn the next job. But we, so playing it safe will always lose for us. Yeah. So we have to do big so that it makes a big difference in their business. Yeah. And, and so we have to swing big. And, but I would also say, like, it's not just a dichotomy of inside versus outside because a key part of our process is working with the internal team, knowing that we can't come in and solve their problems, that we really have to do it together. And so yeah. A lot of our brainstorming involves their accounting team and their customer service team and their creative team um, looking for unique insights that they maybe haven't looked at themselves. 